what is up YouTube? So I was gonna do another video for my introduction of all my reptiles uh, when bam, we got hit with a respiratory infection that infected several of our reptiles. So I decided what a great opportunity to educate my YouTubers on what we do here for goodness snakes for our sick repties, uh, what kind of medications do we use, and how do we go about treating a respiratory infection in snakes. Before we get started with this video, I wanna give a huge shout out to all my patrons. We have a lot of you guys signing up, helping us with our mission, uh, donating to our cause. We really appreciate you guys because we could not do this stuff without people helping us. It has been a struggle the last few years pouring ourselves into these animals and using all the resources we have. And now we're pouring out into you guys, um, hoping that you know you guys will catch on to our mission and uh, wanna help support us and uh, get these animals the best care possible. That being said, we have nine patrons and those nine patrons guys have helped us immensely. You guys are gonna be providing bulbs and substrate and all kinds of stuff for our reptiles that we genuinely need. Thank you to all you patrons donating your money to us every month to help us do what we love doing and to save these animals who are in desperate need of our help. With that being said, let's crack right into this video. Hey okay, guys, so about two days ago, I was doing a live TikTok and got my reticulated python out to say hello to all my followers on TikTok. Shout out to you guys, because I know you're the majority watching these videos on YouTube right now. I really appreciate you guys and the community I've made on TikTok. It is wonderful. Um, but that being said, we noticed Jafar, our big reticulated python, had a bit of a whistle when we pulled him out which larger snakes, you sometimes can hear them breathing anyway, so we didn't think that much of it until we saw some bubbling around the sides of his face. Now, any kind of saliva in your snake is not a good sign. Snakes should not have saliva in their mouth. So if you notice there's saliva or any kind of moisture, um, any kind of bubbling, gurgling, or any of those sounds or sights, uh, you might have a sick reptile on your hands. So upper respiratory infection is very common in these animals. And although it doesn't sound like much, it can be very deadly for snakes. With that being said, we noticed the bubbling and we noticed the spit and we immediately knew that we had to take action or our big boy could, truly, he could die. It's a very scary thing to have happen, especially when you have multiple reptiles uh, because then you're taking the risk of all of your other animals getting sick as well, which that did happen to us. If you're a faithful follower of mine on TikTok, then you know all of my rescues very well. Um, in these bins back here, we have Stricter, who is our 20-year-old senior ball python. He is blind. Um, he's a really sweet boy. He's awesome. But we don't really know how he's going to be when we administer his medicine. So we're going to find that out here in just a little bit this afternoon. I'm going to tag those videos into uh, this YouTube and pip them on in so you guys can watch as we administer the medicine to him. Um, but he we noticed in saliva. I checked all the snakes today downstairs in the reptile room just to see if they had any um, any symptoms or signs of a respiratory infection. And the only two that did other than Jafar, our big boy, was Dr. Pepper, our little corn snake, and uh, Stricter, our big boy ball, ball python. So we're gonna be treating them today, showing you guys what we use, um, the amount to use, and how we get that down their throats. We do do oral treatment. Um, I find it to be easier. I know a lot of reptile keepers use injections, which is totally fine too. Um, put a towel over the snake's head and inject right up underneath their scale. It's super easy. Um, I do like oral injections better. I am very good at controlling their heads, opening their mouths, and making sure we get that syringe back far enough so we don't drown our snakes. That is how we administer the antibiotics. There are a lot of other things you can do um, to prevent the further spread of this infection and to um, avoid antibiotics if you don't want it to get to that point or if you notice it before it has to get to that point. Um, we do things like uh, we bought this humidifier. This thing is really great. We got this on Amazon. So what we do is we fill that a little bit with water. Um, I do put about a cap full of F10 in there. That is a veterinarian grade disinfectant. Um, it is probably my favorite um, cleaner disinfectant we use. We also use chlorhexidine, but this stuff actually is really okay for snakes to breathe in, and it can actually help to um, sanitize their uh, throats and mouths from that infection. Another thing you can do is open your snake's mouth, 
and take a Q-tip and some Listerine and clean all around your snake's mouth with that Listerine, um, killing bacteria that might be living um, up in where their teeth come out of, uh, down in the pits where their tongue is. Um, so that's another really helpful thing that you can do to avoid, you know, making the respiratory infection worse. Uh, just making sure you're killing all the bacteria. Um, another thing you can do is, you know, in the humidifier, um, you can also put a couple of drops of um, eucalyptus oil. I have seen people also do boiling water um, in one side with um, some Vicks va Vapor Rub and letting that steam be in there with them. Obviously, you have to put them in a separate container inside the big container, um, and that can also help as well. Um, getting that Vicks in there and helping them kind of clear out their throats and stuff. Another thing I've seen people do is kind of push some of the mucus out themselves um, to try to clear out the snake's throat, throat and lungs. Um, but what we're doing is we are doing the um, the respiratory clean out with the humidifier, the eucalyptus, and the F10. We're using both at once um, just to be on the safe side to kind of bump this out of there. We are really working hard to get this respiratory infection under control. Theo, my freaking articulated python. Decided to climb up onto my light fixture. He's clearly feeling a lot better. I'm not real happy with him, but it's fine. Okay, I got bit twice. Checking for URIs on my snakes there and once there. Had to open the king snake's mouth. That's never a fun thing to have to do. King snakes are so. I don't want to have to treat my king snake, so I'm getting this under control now so that it does not spread to any of my other snakes because I don't really love getting bitten. All right, guys, so some other cool things that you can do if you think your animal has a respiratory infection is to get some um, repi vitamins. You can put this in a syringe with some water, with some warm water to kind of um, dissolve that. Uh, obviously, that's going to be an oral supplement. Fluker's commercial, I don't know. Shout out to Flukers. I use a lot of their stuff. Also, Flukers has, um, if you guys are looking for heat lamps, and no, they are not sponsoring this video, but if they see this video and they want to sponsor it, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yes, please, send me your money. So anyway, Flukers has um, heat lamps on sale right now on Amazon for like $5.99. So you guys hop on Amazon and check those out. The syringes I use, I also get from Amazon, and the tips are gonna look something like this right here. You just screw them onto that syringe. Um, these are milliliters. I meant to buy milligrams, but it is what it is. I can just uh, divert it down, but I just screw that tip right on there like that. And I don't know if you can see that's a flat tip. It's not really a needle um, and it is not sharp. There's no sharp edges on that. So when I do put it down into my snake's throat, it's not going to hurt him. Um, unless of course he like comes up and jabs, but I've got such good control over them while I'm doing this that that's not really something I'm too worried about. This comes with all kinds of tips, by the way. I didn't even see this one. That's a really good one. Look at that one. I feel like that's a little bit sharper. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, you can get these syringes on Amazon. I would suggest getting milligrams. If you think you have a six snake, the first thing you need to do always, always, always is quarantine. You need to get those snakes out of your reptile room and away from the other animals as soon as possible because this stuff can spread and it can spread fast. I'm literally just sitting in my bathroom. This is the most moist and heated room in my house. So that is why I picked this place to quarantine. It is a pretty large bathroom too, so there's plenty of room in here to still do our thing um, and keep our snakes in here. Now, if I had a bunch of snakes sick, I probably wouldn't be able to keep them in here and I'd have to find an alternative but because there's only three, I can fit them right there nicely and uh, make sure they're staying moist and warm. I've got heating pads on all of their stuff, keeping them nice and warm in there. I will offer them water once a day. Leave a water dish in there because water is a cesspool for bacteria. So if you're leaving their water dish in there and they're drinking out of it with all that mucus and bacteria, that mucus and bacteria is going to go right back into the water and they're going to drink it right back up. So make sure that you are only offering them water once or twice a day, you take that bowl out and you make sure you sanitize it really well before offering it to them again. And that way you're not spreading the infection over and over again after they've healed up from previous infection. Because about two days on the antibiotic, you're gonna start to notice that they're starting to feel better. Much like Jafar who was up here hanging out on my light fixture. <sighs> I don't know how I'm gonna get him down. Another super good indicator that something is wrong with your snake is how often they're flicking their tongues. 
Snakes should be flicking their tongues a lot. It's how they sense their environment. That's basically their way of uh, getting around and that's their curiosity and that's just how they explore. So if they're flicking their tongues and they're acting normal and stuff like that, uh, that's an indicator that you have a healthy snake. But if you notice that they're not flicking their tongues as much, especially when handling and when they're not in their enclosure, and you see that they kind of like slowed down and maybe they're a little bit sluggish, that is a really good sign that they do have a respiratory infection and you might want to check their mouths for saliva. Richter and um, Dr. Pepper back here, I can literally hear them breathing while I'm just sitting here. And because these are smaller snakes, I should not be able to hear them breathing at all. So because I can hear them, I do know that they are both infected with this RI and they both need treated with antibiotics, which they will get this evening. Um, it's once a day we treat them, so we do it um, usually in the evenings. I will go ahead and stitch a video in here of us administering that medication so you can see kind of what that looks like and how we do it. Um, but everybody in this room will be medicated once a day for 14 days. And then they'll be ready to um, come back off the antibiotic. They'll be able to be offered a water dish, um, maybe a paper towel in there. Right now there's literally nothing in there. So I can spray it out with my chlorhexidine, with my X, or F10, uh, making sure every day I am just sanitizing and disinfecting and making sure that bacteria is killed on a daily basis that they're in there living with. So, so in about 14 days, uh, we will be able to put a water dish in with all of them and maybe a little bit of a paper towel substrate for them so um, they're not just directly on that plastic. But for now, this is how they have to be and I know it sucks and I know it seems mean but this is for their best interest and it's just the way it has to be until they're better. Now, these are just like $10 tubs from Walmart. They work really well. Um, I do recommend drilling holes in them, although these are pretty loose on top. My snakes are not escape artists so they generally just stay in there, um, but these are pretty like relaxed on the top. If they're not, I would definitely, um, I would definitely suggest drilling holes in them. There's a couple of holes on the backs of these guys, but uh, I didn't need to do anything crazy because they're not airtight. Um, if you get the kind that have the latches that come up and they seal it really tight, um, I definitely would recommend you gotta drill some holes in there uh, so that your animal can breathe. I do want less holes in mine because when I do put in the humidifier, I want that humidity to stay in there as much as possible. So I do try to get um, some loose lids, um, loose lidded um, Tupperware like these ones here so I don't have to drill as many holes in them so I can keep that um, moisture in there as much as I possibly can. 